20 years since the Margana massacre and some of those involved in the deadly strike say there's still no justice. In what was described as a blot on democratic South Africa, police killed 34 striking miners in August 2012. In the days leading up to the massacre, the people, including police officers, security guards and non-striking workers, were killed. How do we move forward? We're joined by Koketso Mueti from Amandla.mobi. She is uh, now live with us uh, virtually. Koketso, thank you very much for your time. The 16th of August, 10 years later, we're still talking about the story as if we don't know what happened because nobody is serving time in prison or anything uh, for the atrocities that happened on that day and the days leading up to it. I believe that there is some commemoration that uh, your organization is planning for Thursday. Give us more details. Absolutely. So we had asked members of the public um, to commemorate Marikana from where they are. Um, so across the country, there's different events taking place. And we're requesting for people um, to join these events and host their own continuously still. As mentioned before, Marikana was not a once-off event. It was a microcosm of a lot that happens in South African society. The exploitation of, the, of black labor, um, poor living and working conditions. Um, among many, many other things that led up to the strike. And to date, the material conditions in Marikana, very little has changed, right? Mm -hmm. um, over and above that, the families of the slain workers, you know, um, there's been demands for compensation for the loss of income, constitutional damages, but also a formal apology. Mm -hmm. And some of these have not as yet happened. Um, these are just a few of some of the things that could be done, one, to, yeah, to say sorry about what had happened in the past, but also how do you prevent another Marikana from happening? Some of the recommendations made by the expert panel on policing have to date not yet been put in place. And what does that tell us about the prospect of a future Marikana potentially? Mm. So what do you make about the fact that, you know, like you say, they're asking for not only compensation, but also an apology, a mere apology uh, from a specific person who is, of course, the, uh, the current president of South Africa in his personal capacity. So um, what do you make of the fact that till today, these uh, families still have to ask for an apology, obviously because of the email that he had sent? I think it's an absolute disgrace. Um, not only is it about the email that he had sent, but also the fact, the position he was holding in Lonman at the time. Mm. We have to recall that before any police officer and mine worker came face to face with each other, Lonman had created the conditions that allowed this to happen. And so Lonman has such a big responsibility. And given his position at the time, as well as his ability to be a political bro in what we call the toxic collusion between the state, the governing party, as well as um, this, the private interests of the mine, of the mine, it's an absolute disgrace that this has not yet happened. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, um, some of these families, for instance. Uh, um, we found out just uh, last week or something, the state uh, solicitor saying that uh, majority of the families have been paid by the states. I think he mentioned about 48 uh, families that have been compensated already and that the rest is just a matter of uh, determining in court exactly how much, what the sum would be. Not necessarily the state fighting that they won't compensate the families, but just, uh, you know, uh, an argument around how much should these families be paid. With you speaking to them on a daily basis, or, or however often, how are they surviving? The last time we spoke to them here on ENCA, they really still were living in squalor. Um, yeah, and also on the issue of compensation, we have to remember that there's different levels of compensation, right? There's compensation for the loss of income, which some families have received, but not all. There's also a claim around constitutional damages. But also, there are separate claims for those who were injured and arrested, the mine workers themselves who survived, right? Um, who had been arrested, who made claim. Currently, the miners are in court for the adjudication of 48 miners who were seriously injured at the time. Um, the announcement had been that 24 have been settled and the hearings continue for the rest which may be settled. But the ones who were arrested and had been paid 
um, which was not an amount that they had been claiming for. That was a group of about 275 to 287 mine workers. So just on the issue around compensation, there are multiple levels of compensation um, mm. that are being discussed in as far as Marikana is concerned. Mm -hmm. But again, the issue is that... Um, you know, there is no amount of money that will bring back someone's yeah. life, right? Mm. But how do you ensure that breadwinners were lost, right? And there were so many other consequences um, that were a result of what happened in Marikana, you know? And mm. families should be able to survive beyond, yeah. Yeah. And of course, we know that Sibange took over Lonmin, and that was a very big deal, making it the second largest um, platinum producer in the world. And of course, during that time, the Marikana miners were just asking for 12,500 rand uh, salaries take home so they could take their children to school. But that didn't happen. Goketso, thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. Still to come.